live in downtown Detroit. Local 4 live stream with Jason Carr starts now. What's going on? Good to see you. Gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Uh, yeah. Windsurfing on the snow. Where'd he go? Oh, these crazy Red Bull essers. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says Brazil and Sergio Mendez like guys going down a snow-covered mountain. In Japan. In Japan. And he's got to walk up this hill every time. Do you like how we got into this today? This is nice. <laughs> Doesn't this just make you want to have a tropical drink with a... With a windsurfing kite? <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of the folks at Red Bull. Austin Powers is in there somewhere, I'm convinced. Brian, have you ever heard this song? Mash Canada? Yeah, it was uh, 1966, if I remember correctly. Press Hill 66. Uh, Confederate memorial removal. Overnight, the city of New Orleans removed one of two remaining Confederate monuments in the city. So just after 3 o'clock local time, city crews removed the equestrian statue of uh, General Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard. He was the prominent military leader who led the attack on Fort Sumter in South Carolina, a uh, siege that marked the beginning of the end of the Civil War. I've been to Fort Sumter. Have you? Uh, yeah, it uh, feels historic. What about you? What uh, historic places have you been down there? I've actually never really been to much of the South, but... Uh, I, know I highly were, recommend South Carolina. I South never thought Carolina. that I would like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. But I guess they took this uh, memorial out in the middle of the night, and people were kind of upset that they, they you know, were Under cover of under darkness. Under cover of darkness. But uh, I think they're going to be moving them to a museum. They haven't really decided yet, but it's important to keep these monuments at least somewhere. Maybe if it's not in the public square, you got to put it somewhere so that people can still, still see the history. Uh, more to come. An unusual sight on a Hungarian highway this week as motorists had to make way for a herd of horses. The small band of horses clearly on the move, galloping together down a motorway in, in, in. Hmm? Oh yeah, in Budapest. Yeah, I know, I, uh, I saw this. Every story out of Hungary is great. And then there's one horse bringing up the rear. <laughs> See, I, I did that, I paused for effect because John loves to say, Budapest. Budapest. Yep. Having been there. Look at this. It happened around 8.30 a.m. local time Monday. The horses were rep reportedly rounded up, corralled safely. That actually reminds me of the Kentucky Derby, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, these two the stories actually, I can, I can kind of link together. In Budapest, they had taken out all the communist monuments after the revolution or, you know, when the wall fell, and they moved them all to this one park. So there's like a park you can go to, and it's just full of all the communist monuments. And I would imagine that's what they're going to do with the Confederate monuments. Pinko Kami Park? Yeah, no, it was a really cool park. <laughs> uh, uh, Omar, a three-year-old, um, is this right? Yep. This is right. They're called a Maine Coon? A Maine Coon. From Melbourne, Australia. Weighs 30 pounds, 47 inches long, and could be the world's longest. I said longest domestic cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. Just take a look at this thing. I, I should say not thing. Loved, beloved family pet. It's bigger Feline than their friend. dog. Huh? It's bigger than their dog. Oh, come on now. That Sheltie and that cat are not the same size. Yeah. Yeah. It's an enormous cat. And what do they say? It has a, uh, a special diet. Uh, requires what, people? Eats kibble specifically made for Maine Coons for breakfast. And for dinner, feasts on raw kangaroo meat. Oh. 
right? That's mm -hmm. an actual photo. That has not been photoshopped. That is a real live cat. That cat's head, go back to it. That cat's <laughs> head is the same size as his owner's head. Yeah, it's kind of terrifying. Like, what would happen if Omar got upset? <laughs> that's one you declaw. Huh? That's that's one of those cats you declaw. You just, I don't know. <laughs> Watch out. Omar's going to get you. But you never thought you'd see that. No, no, that was a first. <sighs> Probably thought I was tearing Omar's hair out, didn't you? His fur. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounded like. All right, now I can hear myself again. Stevie, uh, Steffi Hurst was contacted by Guinness World Records, who wants to verify that the cat is indeed that large. Omar. Um, Basically, you could become a mascot. Kate Doyle, a veterinary nurse in Perth, Australia, is creating stunning custom casts for animals who go through surgery. She's worked as a vet nurse for five years and has been making bandages for about two years. In most cases, the bandages are done for animals with fractures or ligament repair. She spends anywhere from 30 minutes to three hours creating them and sometimes shares them to Instagram. Yeah, this is, you know, you got to imagine it probably cheers the cats and dogs up a little bit. Oh, sure. <laughs> right. I think uh, Kenneth in our comments is trying to insult us. Yeah, actually, Did I you see, see a couple of people who are just, I don't know. Is it time? I think it's time for our, our oh, uh, uh, semi-regular reminder. OK. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is Jason Carr Live. We're having a lot of fun here. If you're looking for the news, it can be found on clickondetroit.com <laughs> and on Local 4 at noon. Speaking of the news, you know, the voice of God news, the lead story on clickondetroit.com, Plymouth Township home ravaged and ruined after 400 kids allegedly attend a party there. So that, if you go to, that's the number one story and click on. Plus, we've got Local 4 News at noon uh, coming up in about two and a half hours from now. So if your appetite is for something a little more Walter Cronkite, a little more buttoned up TV news, uh, that's where you need to go for it. If you want a little bit of fun and frivolity, a little bit of morning radio zoo mixed with improv, mixed with meaniness, virality, and otherwise excellent storytelling, this is where you come. And you can watch as far away as Perth or Nova Scotia or the Far East. So Kenneth, um, if you're looking for the news, it can be found on Local 4 and certainly not in Ohio. The cute ducklings that call Capitol Hill home are getting a leg up. Two ramps have been installed by the architect of the Capitol to help the newly hatched ducklings maneuver in and out of the reflecting pool on the Capitol grounds. Yeah, a little bit of ingenuity here. Got a duck ramp. I think at the end of this video we get to see some ducks using it. There they are. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not feed the ducks. There's your duck ramp. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like it took all that much to put together and uh, keeps the ducks, you know, get them access to the water, you know? Wow. Wow. We, uh, <laughs> I rather enjoy um, our disclaimers. Yes. about the news oh yeah it's, it's so become a bit in it's gone like what is i guess post meta right yes because even talking like breaking down the fourth wall while you're doing something like this and talking to the audience that's that's sort of meta and then you go post meta if you're actually enjoying the breaking down of the breakdown now or, i ordered graphics I don't who's that walking away ago. curry hobbs check out this cool shirt curry's got on 
Detroit. Oh. You gotta here, I'll lean over so you can get in. Detroit, Paris of the Midwest. Where did you acquire such a fun shirt? Uh, um, if, if I'm not mistaken, it was a gift, but I, I am aware that that was like a real thing. Like at one point, we were the Eiffel Tower of Paris of the Midwest. This area. Well, we were, you know, a French settlement and an English settlement. There's a lot of a European influence here, but uh, yeah, at one point, um, we were up there. We were right up there with uh, New York and Chicago. Right. And even though it's not still the case, I feel like in in our bones it is. So that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Morning traffic producer Kari Hobbs, everybody. Thank you. Keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carolyn D'Agostino is sitting in the hospital watching you from sunny Italy. Oh no. We What's pause that? our rundown yeah. of the day's events to inquire of Carolyn. Why are you in the hospital in Italy? I hope it's nothing too severe. Do we know? It could be bad spaghetti. Could be. Could have been. Uh, uh... Oh, she says she broke her ankle. How? Oh, well, you know, a lot of the a lot of the steps there are made of marble, and when it rains, it gets real slippery. Was that it? Let's just keep guessing. What else? Uh... A uh, mi scusi, mi scusi. A suitor was trying to get to her and stepped on her foot and she twisted and then. Or she could have been stomping on grapes, making wine, and slipped and have, fell. There's have you so ever many... seen the news blooper of the reporter stomping on the grapes? Oh, no. She says she needs surgery, too. Oh. What can we do to cheer you up, Carolyn? I'm sorry that you need surgery. Um, can't really send her a, a care package. I mean, once you get it, you got to get it all the way to Italy. All the way to Italy, customs. and then there's the whole thing. When you yeah. get back, um, we can have you down as a guest, and we can inspect. Uh, well, we can sign your cast. That's an idea. Did you see these casts? <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, I'm not making light of a, a painful situation for you, but can you go back? We have an uh, international cast right here. <laughs> That's right. Um, if you get a cast like that, I definitely want you to come down here and be on the show live, and we will uh, <laughs> we'll do something <laughs> special for you. Uh, Kathleen says, "Feel better, Carolyn." Well, back to our rundown. Illinois Brookfield Zoo showing off the zoo's latest additions. Five-year-old Zana gave birth to a litter of five Mexican gray wolf puppies. They were actually born last month, but are just getting act active enough to make it out of their den on a regular basis. Pretty cute. You know, Jason, I... Uh, yes? I don't think there's anything cooler than being a lone wolf. Unless you're at the wolf picnic and you don't have someone to do the wolf wheelbarrow race with. <laughs> Absurdism at its best. Meanwhile, we're continuing to do the show and alternate conversations are, are <laughs> taking place on, on our, uh, in the comments. Um, a veterinarian in Stillwater, Oklahoma, found a large plastic tub on the doorstep of her office, and inside, nine puppies. Duh, puppies. The tub had holes carved out, and it was sealed shut with duct tape. The vet shot video of the discovery and posted it to social media, where it's gone viral. No word on who left. Who left the tub of cuteness? Who? 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 Who left the tub of cuteness? Who? 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 Look at that center dog. Alpha. Carolyn says, you guys are great. I will be here for a while. I would love to meet you. Look, well, at, look at all like the love that Carolyn got from all the fellow Bacon Nationers. I think we ought to take this show on the road. Maybe uh, head over to the boot. Yeah, for sure that uh, we should. Um, do we have a way of doing this? We do, don't we? Can we route this through the backpack and go live? Yeah. Somebody would have to be back here to, to actually put us up. Yeah. But in theory... Like, for instance, we could do the, the midday. By the way, we do this again at 1230. Um, John goes, basically bails, and hands off the reins to Brian. Uh, can we see Brian? 
the alter ego of Rick Astley, uh, who somehow has not aged in 30 years. And there was a good video I didn't grab, but I saw this just the other day, and Rick Astley was on stage doing a concert, and someone throws a trench coat onto the stage, and he immediately puts it on, and, and start, it's amazing. Oh, he's wearing a trench coat in one of those videos <laughs> for Together Forever, or She Wants to Dance With Me, or whatever. Anyway, Brian and I do a show at uh, 12.30 called Midday Live. Same thing like this. Uh, attracted a pretty healthy audience yesterday. Um, but anyway, the point being, we should take it to Shake Shack. Yeah. Yeah, we absolutely and do it live from Shake Shack. Yeah. And try to make that happen. Can we see the dogs full up one more time? Carolyn says, come over anytime. Oh, wait, did I misunderstand? I thought Carolyn was from here visiting Italy. Gloria says, my beautiful Tracy would want that box of puppies. Oh, no, we're being visited hey. by TV's Ken. Hey, I just heard a great joke. I just wanted to run it by you. Okay. I'm always up for a good joke. What do you call a bear with no teeth? What? A gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, not, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that was whose joke? Drive-by joking, that's exactly what that was. <laughs> Up there, but still not to the bar of... The duck. No, was it the duck? No, no. Two ducks are in a tank? No, two fish are in a tank. <laughs> you already blew it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> a Twitter account called We Rate Dogs recently passed 2 million followers. It's exactly what it sounds like. The account shares pictures of dogs and assigns a number rating to each one. Uh, we Rate Dogs was started by Matt Nelson... 20-year-old college sophomore who launched this like a year and a half ago. He has an online store that sells dog merchandise and that earns him five figures a month. It's not bad, you know, just for running a... Uh, so the idea here, and it wasn't, he wasn't even the originator of the idea. Somebody else came up with a Twitter handle. Um, it says, at dog underscore rates, we rate dogs. Somebody had dog rates. Okay. And after one day and like seven pictures, just gave up on it. So he smooths in, takes, you know, at dog underscore rates, mm -hmm. and people start sending him photos, and he's really smarmy, or at least he was kind of absurdist. Mm -hmm. So the things that he says, like one of his shtick is that he rates every dog at least 10 out of 10. Everyone gets a 10. Some get 12 out of 10, some get 13 out of 10. Like, for instance, here, this is Paisley. She ate a flower just to prove she could. Savage as blank. <laughs> 13 out of 10 would pet so well. And it just, it really caught on. People, like, went crazy for it. How many followers does he have now? Uh, over 2 million over now, two right? Million. Yeah. 2 million followers on Twitter. Um, we found this from a magazine article uh, online. I found it at Longform. Dot org, longform.org. If you want to read up on it, you can go there and uh, check it out. But by the end of the article, he sort of seems to be having a crisis of, okay, now what? Yeah, because once you once you kind of get something off the, and you get two million followers, you get to try and keep that type of momentum going. Is it's only so many people on Twitter. And, well, and then there's only so many dogs. You got a limited number of Twitter users. You got a limited number of dogs. Well, I, and I've got an idea for him. Why did you go running off for a second? Did you have something going on? Oh, because we only had one of these We Rate Dog photos, and we had more, but they didn't seem to get into the folder, so he went and grabbed ah. them. Ah. But I have an idea for this gentleman, and it's going to make him a lot of money, and I want 10%. We Rate Cats. Oh, there's that, too. Yep. <coughs> <laughs> um, okay, here we go. I may as well just put this up and leave it. A Kickstarter campaign for the Romp Him is trying to make a rompers for men a thing. Uh, the guys behind the project are friends from business school who came up with the idea over a round of beers, but of course they did. They've already met their $10,000 funding goal, and the garments are scheduled to ship to backers in August. So how about that? How about that vacuum cleaner that is suddenly fired up down the hall from us here? Yeah, this is the perfect time for it. 
Now, I already told Brian he's not allowed to wear one of these to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call that red, but I think that's pink. Yeah, that would be pink. Oh, okay. A grieving father warns of the dangers of caffeine after it's linked to the death of his teenage son, 16-year-old Davis Allen Kripe? Kripe collapsed in a classroom in his high school outside of Columbia, South Carolina last month and died in the emergency room. Uh, the Richland County Coroner calls his death a caffeine-induced cardiac event linked to Cripe's caffeine intake. The coroner reports the teen drank a large caffeinated soda, a latte, and an energy drink in two hours' time right before his death, according to his friends. He had a pre-existing heart issue diagnosed at an earlier age um, but his friends say the only precipitating event that they could think of that might have led to this tragic outcome was that he downed all these drinks not alcohol caffeine uh, in such a short amount of time two hour span where he put all this down which got me kind of frightened this morning I think I've had three or four cups of coffee. you're not supposed to have more than four cups of coffee a day yeah <laughs> and <laughs> I'll bet I drink two oh, pots. No. <laughs> Easily two pots. I don't do the energy drinks. Mm -hmm. And pop, eh, a little bit here, a little bit there. But what a tragic story out of South Carolina. This young man losing his life uh, in the corner says it's possibly likely due to the sudden surge of caffeine in his system in a short amount of time. All right, we uh, have Live in the D coming up Ooh, for you. We have uh, the Folgers thing. Did I miss Folgers? It was right before this. We got a whole bunch of caffeine stuff. Now, I don't know why you sent this to me. I don't know what we're talking about, but let's go ahead and watch it anyways. Big idea. George has complained about my coffee long enough. Now watch this. This is our usual instant coffee. I can see that. Look at this. Hey. What is that? It's new Instant Folgers Coffee Crystals. How does it taste? See? It sparkles. But how does it taste? And look how much darker and richer it is. Yeah, but how does it taste? Well, taste it. George is discovering new Instant Folgers. Tastes great. New Instant Folgers Coffee Crystals. Sparkling crystals of dark, rich, pure coffee. wonder why they sparkle. I don't know, but I'll have another cup. Folgers develop these crystals to give you a better tasting coffee. I've ever had. Tastes so good, you'd hate to put it down. That's right. New Instant Folgers Coffee Crystals. Taste so good, you hate to put it down. Roy Scheider. Uh, who from knew Jaws. this even existed? Roy Scheider from Jaws, one of my all-time favorite actors, uh, showing up on boingboing.net today. Uh, those guys uh, at that awesome website having unearthed a... A commercial from back in the day. Yeah. Okay. A fun commercial. I was looking for Jaws bits to try and weave into this, and, well, we just left it as is. Martin Brody, says Jim Felton. Yeah, that was the name of his character in Jaws. Uh, Folgers? No. Taster's Choice? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to need a bigger cup. I was going to make that. <laughs> I was going to go for that, but I you know, <laughs> left it for you. I have Taster's Choice upstairs in the Live in the D office. Yep. In case you were wondering. Okay, uh, once again, let's return to uh, our opening salvo here. Levi Siver, or Siver of the United States, a former World Cup and now freestyle windsurfer, taking part in an unprecedented challenge to fly down a snowy mountain on a modified windsurfing board. So the kind of board that you would be on water with? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. There's the setup. Uh, Cyber and his support team chose Mount Rashiri Island in northern Japan where they spent eight days filming his attempt. Uh, you can find this video online. We have it for you, right? That's right. Okay, let's wrap oh, it up. Oh, 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 oh. Da, 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 da. That's not a bad Sergio Mendez. Everybody uh, have a great day, and we'll see you live in the D. Stay classy, Detroit.